Bentley presented the deed to Mayor Lucy, who is Claire's uncle. Good morning, everyone. Thanks, thank you all for coming, and I thank Jose for leaving. Um, I'm Kathy Rose. I'm the president of the Keith Park Neighborhood Association, also known as the KPNA. And we are delighted that you're all present here today and can join us for this wonderful celebration. Our program this morning will include a few speakers, as well as a ceremonial presentation of the park deed that was uh, given to the Keith family, to the Brockton mayor, from the Keith family to the Brockton mayor in uh, 1952. After our speaking program, we invite you to stay for light refreshments, which are thank you to the generosity of State Rep. Jerry Cassidy. Hey. Thank you. And to enjoy a concert by the Wolverine Jazz Band, courtesy of Mayor Carpenter. Hey. I don't know where everybody is behind me. Um, and they're awesome, aren't they? There's an old proverb that says, if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. We here today know that that has proven that saying to be true. James Keith began our story when he immigrated to America from Scotland in 1662. George Keith continued it when he started the Walk Over Shoe Company over on Perkins Ave in 1874. Myron Keith, his brother, added to that story when he followed the wishes of his brother, George, took down the family mansion, created this park, and handed the deed to then Mayor Lucy in 1952. The Keith Park Neighborhood Association began our part of the story with our first meeting on February 11th, 2014. Hard to believe it was that long ago, almost four years. Through the park cleanups, Easter egg hunts, community dining out nights, Friday night flicks in the park, flag day picnics, holiday lantern walks, and our most recent Campello 1917 pop-up village, we've worked to make this park, the George E. Keith Park, our Campello town green and a positive asset to our neighborhood. Rob May, our city planner, along with our land, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong paragraph. Hold on a second. Rob May, our city planner, and Mayor Bill Carpenter added their chapters when an application for a state park grant was submitted to the Reboot Keith Park campaign was started in, in July of 2015. Tim Carpenter and his crew, along with our landscape design firm and contractors, created the final chapter of this story in 2017, or should we say, the end of part one, and now we begin part two, titled Hashtag Free the Fountain. KPNA thanks everyone who contributed to make this day possible. We are all neighbors, friends, residents, just ordinary folk who believe we can come together and make a difference in our community. We know that when we partner with government and businesses and other nonprofits, we can go far. We hope that you will join us and start a neighborhood association of your own. Maybe find and adopt your own neighborhood town green and start your own Brockton neighborhood story. We know there are plenty of parks around the city that could use everybody's help. Because we all love happy endings, thank you for being here and being a part of this story. So now I'm going to turn the program over to our KPNA treasurer, Lynn Smith, our mover and our shaker, who will introduce our speakers. Thank you so much. The sun will come out tomorrow. <laughs> so good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I want to introduce the folks that are here sitting behind me today, our state delegation, Senator Mike Brady. We also have with us uh, State Rep Jerry Cassidy, State Rep Claire Cronin, Register of Deeds John Buckley, um, Jim Benson from the Brockton Historical Society, Michelle Dubois, our state rep, and um, over in the special speaker's corner, we have Chris Costa, who was the original steward of this park. So welcome them all this morning. I also see in the audience our city planner, Rob May, and the two people in his, o in his office that are in therapy because of me. Where is Shane O'Brien and Pam Gurley? 
So thank you, thank you all for coming. Did I miss anyone in the audience? Anyone else here that I missed? I know Wynn Farwell is here as well from our city council. And uh, I know that um, Carl Landerholm is here as well from the Historical Society. So welcome everyone this morning. You know, I bet you all remember from second grade, remember Joyce Kilmer's poem? I think that I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree. And then the poem ends, poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. And we have invited a very special person to give the invocation today because his church, First Evangelical Lutheran Church, opened its heart and its doors to KPNA and has hosted our meetings for the past four years. So Reverend Jeffrey Johnson of First Evangelical Lutheran Church, could you please lead us in thanks and praise? Good morning. So glad to be here. Thank you so much, Lynn, for inviting um, inviting me to lead an invocation, as well as um, we are so happy to open our doors to anything involving the city um, down at First Lutheran right at 900 Main Street. In fact, there are meetings going on there right now, So, um, and I have to go back to them. So I have a grand and glorious day today um, rededicating this park and putting this fountain on. I'm excited. So, I have um, some general prayers here, and um, I just want to take a moment of silence and enjoy um, the wind rustling through the trees and um, this glorious space. Accept, O God, our thanks and praise for all that you have made and done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you for all those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you and each other alone. With that, let us give thanks to God for all the glorious gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for the beauty and the wonder of creation in earth and sky and sea, for all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, for our daily food and drink, our homes and families and our friends, for minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve, for health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play, for the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity, for all valiant seekers after truth liberty and justice, for the communion of all those gone before us and for here now, especially for the memory of George E. Keith. And above all, we give thanks today, gracious God, for this glorious space, this outdoor cathedral. And we give you thanks for the memory of George Keith and his vision for a place for people to have recreation and restoration. All this we ask in your name that is holy. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Jeff. Thank you so much, um, Reverend Jeff. And in the spirit of thanks, may I also send out my personal thanks to the Parks Department employees who were here at 7 o'clock this morning sprucing up the park, um, and also to my good friends Corey and Brian from City Hall who were here at 8 o'clock this morning to help us set up. So give them all a round of applause. You know, this project was done through a state grant called a PARK grant, P-A-R-K. And when the application went in, we needed some residents to show support. And so we started the hashtag Reboot Keith Park, hashtag Free the Fountain, and we tried to help as much as we can. But most of all, the park application needed somebody who really knew how to put it together. And so I am very, very honored to 
introduce that man to you, our city planner, Rob May. Well, good morning, and um, I'm really pleased to see so many people here. Um, it is going to be a beautiful day. Lynn has promised me that. Um, so the sun should be shining soon. But um, I want to really thank the community for participating in this process. Something that um, I've, I've only been a part of, of Brockton for maybe three years now. And uh, a philosophy that the mayor and I share is that this is all of our city and we all have to be involved in planning and in creating place and restoring the things that we love, preserving the things that need to be protected, and growing in areas where we need to expand our economy. And so um, we led a, a very uh, a long planning process uh, to get to where we are today. And I do want to thank uh, Pam Gurley, who uh, keeps us on task and on budget, uh, Shane O'Brien, who um, you know never gets any of the credit but has to pick up all the mess after me um, he nods his head and uh, also to the city council because they're the ones who've supported us as we uh, bring these grant opportunities to the city and so it's it's this partnership that I think we're celebrating here today and um, it, it really is what is going to move Brockton forward so I thank you all for uh, participating uh, oh, I'm sorry. I uh, just noticed uh, Dave LaPointe from our, he was our designer and uh, helped us uh, put together this this uh, 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 award-winning uh, award that we won the grant um, project here. So thank you very much for uh, coming out. And uh, with that, I'll turn it back to Lynn. Great. Thank you, Rob. Good job. Terrific job by the planning uh, department. And you know, many of us who are members of the neighborhood in Keith Park went to the public planning meetings that Beale and Thomas um, facilitated. And I also have to give a shout out to Larry from Vozella Construction. Where's Larry? So he's the guy that uh, makes all of the pipes work. And you know, we were chit-chatting. He purchased the company from a family named Vozella who lived in Boston, and I dated one of the Vozella boys. <laughs> I had to call my mother and up and say, was it a good breakup or was it a bad breakup? Uh, it was good. It was good, Larry. It was good. It was good. So, you know, before there's a plan, thanks to Beals and Thomas, before there's blueprints, thanks to Vozella Construction, there has to be a vision. And back in 2013, Mayor Carpenter and I had a conversation about community engagement, how it's important, how it could look in Brockton, how to get it going, how it could benefit our citizens and our city. You know, Mr. Mayor, there's another saying we like at KPNA. If you think you're too small to make a difference, spend one night in a room with a mosquito. <laughs> But thanks to you, the mosquitoes of the Keith Park Neighborhood Association and the Campello community have made a difference here. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our mayor, Bill Carpenter. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. I was afraid I was dressed a little too casual, but then I saw Rob and realized I was okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is this really truly is an exciting day for the entire city the neighborhood for for all the reasons mentioned I think what you see here today just exemplifies in so many ways uh, So many of the ideals and, and projects that we're working on and the others have Already referred to it, but I the first thing I think of this morning is collaboration because truly a lot of different folks and groups came together to make this possible and Tim Carpenter from the Parks Department, Rob and his planning team, the BRA, because we did also use some CDBG money to match the, the state grant money, uh, and particularly, as Lynn mentioned, the Keith Park Neighborhood Association, because uh, the community input and the community ownership of this park is what makes it work, and it's what makes it worth the investment. It, it fits a larger goal and game plan of ours of, of reclaiming and reinvesting 
in all of our parks and playgrounds and green spaces and, and believing firmly that you stabilize neighborhoods, restore neighborhoods and improve business districts when the neighborhood and the people who live there reclaim ownership and control of the green spaces. And that's exactly what you see here today. I do recall that conversation, Lynn, back in 2013. And it was at that time that Lynn first showed me this proposed model of what a Keith Park Neighborhood Association would look like. And it is a, it is a model that we've embraced. And you see the success of it here, but we're also looking to replicate this in every neighborhood and park across the city. And today we have an active neighborhood association at the James Edgar Playground. We have a new neighborhood association at the Ash Street Playground that's growing. And very soon we hope to be launching one at McKinley Park on the north side of the city. Because I do believe that as you reclaim ownership of these green spaces and you embrace the idea of neighborhood associations, that you build these neighborhood associations out from the parks and playgrounds and that's where they start and that's geographically where you build out from and it's a model that clearly has worked here and we believe will work over and over in neighborhoods across the city. What you also see here today is our reclaiming of our history and Lynn's done a great job with that and you'll hear a lot of that today but if you look at any city like Brockton that's been able to reinvent itself in its 21st in the 21st century successfully bringing the city forward means reclaiming your past and that's a big part of what you also will hear about here today is how this uh, reclaims the past history of this part of the city of Campello of the Keith family of the establishment of the park and it also embraces the village green concept and, and that's why we're replacing and restoring parks and playgrounds because we want them to be inviting places for all segments of the community to come out to, young, old, multicultural. Uh, this is what we want these spaces to be, to be shared by all. You also see here, I mean clearly, there's an economic development aspect to what's going on here. This is part of our larger plan of economic development, and particularly here in Camp Hello. You look across the street, you see the CVS uh, development. I never thought I'd be happy to see a CVS, but I was happy to see this one, because that was a distressed uh, block there uh, before that redevelopment occurred. Uh, but now that's linked with this new green space here, and with the train station right behind us, as much as we talk about transit-oriented development downtown, transit-oriented development is not just downtown. We have three commuter rail stations. And so this park, a key feature of this park is the linking of the commuter rail station to the surrounding neighborhood and business district. And when you look at the redesign of this park and the things that were changed, the fence came down to make it more inviting to come in but also the walkways were redesigned to provide a natural walking trail, a natural link between the neighborhood, the business district, and the commuter rail station. So the planning will continue here with Campello, but now this is really the centerpiece. This is the centerpiece of this great section of the city that we're working hard to rebrand with that Campello brand. And you know, the planning will, the Campello planning is going forward building upon the uh, Urban Land Institute uh, work that was done back in 2011, many of whose recommendations have already been implemented. Uh, and then we'll continue with the, uh, the T recently announcing their uh, commitment to reinvest in fixing up the uh, commuter rail station, new parking lot and landscaping, and helping us with a more direct walking link into and out of that commuter rail station. So this becomes a, a very important keystone of a much larger effort here in Campello and truly improves the quality of life for everyone who lives in this neighborhood. So thank you to everyone, everyone that was involved. Truly this represents that how we really when, when we don't all worry about who gets the credit, that's when you can really get things done. And a lot of folks deserve credit for this day taking place today. Thank you.
thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I think some of you might have noticed the backdrops that we hung in the trees. One is of the Keith home that stood in this uh, park for many years, and the other is the walkover shoe uh, factory. And we're going to talk about a new initiative for the park um, later on. But if we do get help with the MBTA or from the state for an alleyway or an art walkway from here to the train parking lot because we don't have a parking lot and maybe they'll let us use a few of their spaces when we have events, uh, we're going to need the help of our state delegation. So what I'd like to do is uh, ask our state delegation to come up and say a wor few words. We'll start first, if it's okay, with Senator Mike Brady, um, followed by State Rep. Michelle Dubois. Uh, Representative Cronin, I'm going to leave you to the end for a special for a special presentation, if that's all right. So please welcome State Senator Mike Brady. Thank you, and I'm very honored and privileged to be here. This is a beautiful historic part of the city of Brockton. We have a historic South Street right around the corner. Thank you to the Keith family for dedicating this park, and all of us working together, all the you know, we as elected officials might be at the forefront, but it's all the unsung heroes that work behind the scenes, all the people that are on this board here, all the people that work to make this possible, that may not get the credit. You are what makes us the City of Champions, not us elected officials, and we are the City of Champions because we work together. Doesn't matter what district you represent, what ward you represent, we work as a team, and that's what makes us successful with our mayor, our city council, our state delegation, and our federal delegation, because they've been very helpful with the community development block grants, as the mayor mentioned. We're fortunate we have a great state delegation here, and we have a great city council and mayor and school committee. Our schools are thought of as probably one of the top school systems in the country. And uh, thank you to all the school committee members as well, but also all the residents who showed up today. Thank you. Hope far, hope so far the weather has held and it's supposed to be turning to sun this afternoon, so hopefully uh, we'll, we'll move forward with better weather as the weekend goes on. But I have a little citation here, if you wouldn't mind coming up. Well, that's great. And may I also invite the members of the Keith family Absolutely. to come up? Yes. So our members of the Keith family, could you come up for the presentation? <coughs> come on. Stand on this side of state. Um, and we'll, we'll be introducing them a little bit, but... Go right and I know our House delegation has a citation as well, but this is official citation from the State Senate, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to the George E. Keith Park Neighborhood Association in recognition of your rededication of the improved George E. Keith Park, continuing your ongoing commitment to the renewal of the Camp Hello neighborhood, and it's signed by the President of the Senate, Stan Rosenberg, the Clerk of the Senate, William Welch, myself, Mike Brady, and stated today and congratulations and thank you for what your family has given to Brockton as well. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. you want to get over here? Yep. I don't want to block the And we'll, we'll keep it on no the podium worries. for safety. Okay. Thank you. Everybody good? Thank All you. right, thank you. We'll put thank it here you. for safekeeping. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so What's much. What's that? I also want to give a special shout out and a special thank you to a guy who is always quiet, who doesn't want the spotlight, but is the first one to call me up and say, what can I do to help? And his fingers might be a little um, stained with mustard because he made all the sandwiches last night. So give a thanks and a special clap for State Representative Jerry Cassidy. I'm just going to be brief, and uh, I just want to thank Lynn. Uh, I've always been uh, very supportive of Lynn. The other night we were down at the uh, uh, South Junior High, and a car broke down. You know, Dennis, I hope you uh, you know we got a new battery for that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Lynn has done a phenomenal job here in Brockton, and uh, as the mayor said, you know we're working with other uh, uh, Edgar's Park and Astry Playground. We're going to uh, you know work as uh, uh, collaborative as, as we can. But uh, I was here the other day. 
and uh, Mrs. Hall, who lives right down the street here, um, we were just uh, talking, she was waiting for the bat bus, and a gentleman who lives uh, right down the street here worked with my father at the phone company. We talked for about a half an hour, and that's what this place is about, a meeting place for, you know, all the neighbors who live, uh, you know, all around here. But Lynn, thank you yes, very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you. And we are in the district of State Representative Michelle Dubois. I'm so happy to be here and welcome you all to the 10th Plymouth District, right on the edge of my and Jerry districts that we represent. So I know the residents of this district and of Jerry's districts will enjoy this park for many years to come. Many of you don't know that my dad worked for the park department for some 40 years. So by the time I was seven years old, I knew where every single park in the city was. I knew how to get there. And we would go by on the weekends and check up on the park. And I always remember coming to this park and these trees, and especially in the fall, how much I enjoyed coming here with my dad. We were a very low-income family, and it was really the parks that made um, my youth an enjoyable time. So I want to thank all the folks that work for the Park Department, past and present. Mr. John Dorgan was my dad's boss for some 30 years and did a great job really stewarding this city's parks. And so when I ran for city council, the parks were my number one agenda, and they still are as a state representative representative. And it's funny because Mr. Keith had a love for parks, having been a park commissioner himself for many years, and really caring about and donating this park to the city. So I'm so happy to be here and be heard in the celebration of this wonderful park rededication. And I want to thank so much my delegation as well as every single person as a member of the Keith Park Neighborhood Association, Mr. Caldwell, Cindy Koska, uh, it's Kathy Rose and of course Lynn Smith for all her work as well as Paul Stadensky, um, counselor for Ward 4, for his real care about the parks in his district and his people. Um, I also have a citation to present, but since you're having the Keith family come up, would you like to do that when um, Representative Conan does it or Maybe now? We could have the members of the Keith Park Neighborhood Association. So have I would Cindy, love that, yes. Cindy and Chris and Wonderful. Kathy Thank and you. Richard. Thank you so much. And if the delegation wouldn't mind, because we all signed the citation anyways. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for all your hard work. Thanks for flying out. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, nice to see you. So this is a citation from the whole delegation, and it reads, The Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the House of Representatives. Be it here known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest and congratulations to the Keith Park Neighborhood Association in recognition of the rededication of the improved George E. Keith Park and the Keith Park Neighborhood Association's ongoing commitment to the renewal of the Campello neighborhood. The entire membership extends its best wishes and expresses is the hope for future good fortune and continued success. And this is signed by all the members of the delegation, Representative Cronin, Representative Cassidy, and myself, as well as the Speaker of the House, Robert DeLeo. So thank you so much for your service to the city. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, put it right down here. Good, good, good. So, when George Keith died in 1920, in his will it said, please take my mansion down, and you'll see the picture of the house that we have uh, in the park, and his brother Myron fulfilled his wishes to turn this piece of land into park to give to the city. And Myron hired a very famous landscape design firm called the Olmsted Brothers. Many of you might know the name Frederick Law Olmsted. He designed Central Park. He was responsible for Golden Gate Park. He also designed the Emerald Necklace in Boston. So it was the Olmsted Brothers who designed this park. And we reached out to the Olmsted National Historic Site in Brookline, Massachusetts, and they sent us a whole memory stick 
filled with all of the plans, all of the notes, all of the correspondence, all of the photos, and that helped inform us design this park. That's why the fences came down. That's why the pathways were put where they were. That's why their blacktop. All because we took those cues from the Olmstead design. And our Register of Deeds, John Buckley, was able to find that original deed dated June 10th, 1952. So as old as I am, John, thank you very much. <laughs> and he has now placed it in a very special place. So we're going to recreate that presentation, but I do want to introduce John Buckley and thank him for his work. So I want to echo um, all the congratulations and thank yous to the mayor, Mayor Coppina, the city council, the state delegation, uh, all the city departments that were involved with this, and thank in advance the city workers that will maintain this property. But uh, as registered deeds of Plymouth County, we're responsible for millions of land records, uh, some that go back into the handwriting of the original colonists. Uh, we started a notable Plymouth County Register of Deeds notable land record collection many years ago. Uh, this is not the first recognition of the Keith family in that collection. Uh, as Carrie knows, we honored her father, Congressman Hastings Keith, who uh, was the last person from Plymouth County elected to Congress. The Keith family has a tremendous history, not only in Brockton, but Plymouth County. So I researched and worked with Lynn Smith in developing not only the, the deed that transferred the land to the city of Brockton, but language describing it. Uh, Lynn has been kind enough to put it together in a very beautiful uh, display from members of the Keith family and will be passed on to the Historical Commission, members of the Neighborhood Association who did such great work. But uh, I know that Lynn's idea was to recreate uh, the granting and transfer of the deed. Um, happy to be a part of that. So thank you again to everyone involved, particularly the Neighborhood Association, for all the work that you've done recreating our great history here in Brockton. Thank, thank you. Thank you, John. Great. Thank you. Great. So John is going to stand by, as will the members of the Keith family. We're going to recreate that 1952 photograph. But the mayor at the time was a mayor named Gerard Lucy. Gerald Lucy. I apologize. Gerald Lucy. Now, we tried to get Mr. Lucy to come, but he's too happy in heaven. So we did the next best thing, and we invited his niece to come, our state representative, Claire Cronin. Uh, good morning. It is my very great pleasure to be here. And once again, thanks to all the many, many people who were so instrumental in uh, doing all the good and hard work that got us here today. Lynn, you're outstanding. Uh, the Keith. Park Neighborhood Association, the mayor, all the good people from City Hall who work so hard on this. I always call Pam Gurley the, you know, she always gets the seventh player award, uh, who is always so instrumental, Shane. Uh, but in any event, today I feel a little bit uh, sentimental and it's a little special for me uh, because this is where my past meets my present. Uh, my uncle Gerald, who was the mayor of Brockton, lived across the street from me. He had no children, so he was always a very special uncle to all of us. Although in the true nature of sibling rivalry, I will have to say my sister Jerry, his godchild, was his favorite. <laughs> and, and she will be the first to tell you that. <laughs> uh, so it's extra special uh, for me to be here today. Uh, he was pretty much my very big uh, inspiration and knowing the importance of public service and the difference you can make. So it's particularly special, and I thank Lynn uh, for including me in this thank as well. You, thank, you. thank you. Thank so you. So 
now what we'd like to do is we'd like to ask John Buckley and Claire and the members of the Keith family and Mayor Carpenters to stand in front of the podium and we're going to recreate that ceremonial handing of the deed. So I'm going to give this deed and we have copies of this for the Keith family. I'm going to give it to you Candy and what we want you to do is ceremonially Serium, right there is perfect. Ceremonially, you're going to hand that deed to Claire and to Maya Carpenter, just as they did in 1952. And we need a big round of applause. Woohoo! Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And we have copies, candy for you and Kerry for you to take home with you today. And we have one for you, Claire. We'll keep Thank it in a safe spot. Thank you. Great. Great. I have um, I have one announcement that I'd like uh, to make uh, before we do the ceremonial uh, blessing of the of the park with the fountain. And that is a, a very exciting new initiative that we'd like to uh, tell you about today. One of the things we'd like to do in this park, which is a passive park, it won't have a ball field, it won't have a swing set, it's a place to come and reflect and have community events and think. But we also want to honor the history of Campello and we want to honor the history of the Keith family and our path, but always looking with an eye towards the future. You may have come to our pop-up village where we had immigrants of 1917 talking to immigrants of 2017 and comparing notes. We couldn't have done that without the help of so many volunteers that are here today. And so the Keith Park Neighborhood Association is proud to announce a new collaboration that will be between Stonehill College, Southeastern Regional Votech, and um, the Brockton Rotary. And I know that Nick McCummings is here and Betty is here. Stand up and wave. And so thanks. <laughs> thanks to the generosity of Brockton Rotary and the skills of the student of Southeast Regional and the research of Stonehill College with our members of the Brockton Historical Society. I know Carl Landerholm is here. Carl, give everybody a wave. We're going to be putting some historic small signs in the park to tell the story of Campello and Brockton and George Keith and the walkover shoe. So we're so excited. We thank Brockton Rotary for that opportunity and Stonehill and my, my school, um, Southeastern Regional Votech and the Brockton Historic um, Society. So thank you all for that. So now I have to cue Corey and I want all of my folks to focus their attention on the fountain and maybe my delegation can stand in back of the fountain or on either side of George Keith's name. Are you ready to do a countdown? Are you ready to do a countdown? So stand on either side of George's name. Test the direction of the wind. All right. And we're going to say five. Four, Four, three, three two, two, one. Woo! We think this is the first time in 37 years that this fountain has flowed. 37 years. So Larry, all of your hard work paid off and I don't see any leaks. Thank you so much. And so now to conclude the program, to conclude the program, a couple of housekeeping things. I'm going to ask Jim Benson from the Brockton Historic Society up to conclude the program. And then I'm asking you to take a chair down on the other side of the fountain. 
enjoy the concert by the Wolverine Jazz Band. Enjoy the food. May I also ask at this moment in time for Chris Costa to come up and if I have any children in the audience, I want my students from the Gilmore and the Huntington and the Goddard. Where are my kiddos and, and where's Mary Beth O'Brien? I want you guys to come up. I need kids and I need Mary Beth. And can someone get the mums for um, for Chris? All right, well then go grab two of the mums and go grab two of the mums. All right, get it, mum. Mary Beth O'Brien is the principal of the Gilmore School and she represents the stewards of the future. And Chris Costa lived next to this park for many years and was its steward for many years. So this ceremonial placing of the mums in front of George Keith's name represents that continued stewardship. So give them a hand. Perfect. Oh, and look, they're getting watered. Oh, they're getting watered. Good. All right. And to conclude our program, give, uh, give my friend Jim Benson of the Brockton Historic Society a round of applause. Thank you, Lynn. Good morning. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, members of our legislative delegation, Residents of Campello, Brockton, and vicinity, I bring you greetings from the Brockton Historical Society this day. Near this spot in 1758, Levi Keith, great-grandson of Reverend James Keith, began making shoes and thus establishing a shoemaking dynasty that would exist in this neighborhood for more than two centuries. In 1845, Franklin Keith and his wife Betsy would erect an L on their home what became known as the Old Red Shop here at the corner of Main and Garfield Street and made boots and shoes. It was in this shop that their sons, George Eldon, Dennis Carey, and Myron Lee, would learn the shoe trade. In 1874, George E. ventured out on his own with a new concept, not only making boots and shoes, but making them under the brand, a brand name walkover becoming one of the first people to brand a shoe. This entrepreneurial spirit led Georgie to become a leader and giant in the industry on the world stage. Keith attracted and employed thousands of immigrants to work in his factory and provided for them recreational resources, medical and nutritional offerings unknown in the 19th century workplace. It is fitting that this park stands where not only his ancestral home once stood, but where his own home and that of his brother Myron stood in the shadow of his once great manufacturing facility. It is our hope that this park will stand for many generations to come as a reminder of the greatness of the entrepreneurial spirit that built Brockton and the Campello neighborhood and will encourage others to follow in that spirit and continue to revitalize a great neighborhood and a great city in the way this park has been revitalized. Thank you. All right, so thank you again. I think I saw um, Councillor Anieri here. I think I saw Councillor Beauregard here. All of the volunteers of the Keith Park Neighborhood Association. We couldn't do this without you. So everybody, pick up your chair, bring it over to our lawn. The Wolverine Jazz Band, courtesy of the mayor, is gonna to start to play. <laughs>